Katie and Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Sunday, February 12th, 2023. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with news out of Japan. Oh, 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 After pro wrestling NOAA champion Kaito Kiyomiya successfully defended the global honored crown title over Jack Morris today, New Japan's IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Kazuchika Okada attacked Kiyomiya, laying him out with his Rainmaker short arm clothesline. The angle served to heat up the upcoming match between the two champions in Keiji Muto's retirement show on February 21st. I'll have more news from NOAA's card in Osaka later in the program. In ratings news, in the overnight ratings, SmackDown drew an average viewership of 2.390 million last Friday night on Fox, according to a report from Spoiler TV. That number is slightly up from the previous week's audience of 2.263 million. In the key 18 to 49 year old demographic, the overnight rating was 0.6, which would tie it for first place on network TV in the key demo. Full ratings information for SmackDown is expected later in the week. In injury news, Eddie Kingston was pulled from last night's Defy Wrestling Year 6 event in Seattle where he had been scheduled to face Artemis Spencer. The announcement from Defy came mere hours before the show began, with an injury cited as the cause, although the nature of the injury was not divulged. We'll keep you updated as more information becomes available. Amari Miller has become the latest NXT star to sustain an injury, announcing early yesterday that she recently tore her ACL. The injury will reportedly require surgery, which is scheduled for next week. Miller last wrestled in the Women's Battle Royal on the New Year's Evil edition of NXT on January 10th. The injury follows another ACL tear sustained by fellow NXT performer Nikita Lyons, as well as the more recent retina tear suffered by J.D. McDonough. In AEW news, AEW World Tag Team Champions Colton and Austin Gunn have signed new deals with the company, according to a report from Fightful Select. The Guns, who just won the tag team title from the acclaimed last week on Dynamite, agree to what is reportedly a multi-year deal, although the exact length was not made public. With National Wrestling Alliance news, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. The National Wrestling Alliance presented Nuff Said, live on Fight TV pay-per-view last night, from the Egypt Shrine Center in Tampa, Florida. In the main event, Tyrus pinned Matt Cardona with the Tongan Death Grip to retain the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Mike Knox had earlier interfered in the match on behalf of Cardona, but Bully Ray, serving as guest commentator, neutralized Knox, allowing Tyrus to get the win. This was Tyrus's first defense of the NWA title, since winning it three months ago from Trevor Murdoch at NWA Hard Times in New Orleans. New NWA Women's Tag Team Champions were crowned when the Renegade Twins, Charlotte and Robin, beat Kenzie Page and Ella Envy of Pretty Empowered. Charlotte rolled up Envy to get the win and the title for her team, and end Pretty Empowered's reign at 246 days. NWA World Women's Champion Camille pinned Angelina Love in a no-disqualification match to retain her title. The win marked Camille's 27th successful defense of the title, and extended her reign to 616 days. Only Jazz, Mischief, Debbie Combs, The Fabulous Moolah, June Byers, and Mildred Burke have had reigns longer than Camille's in the 73-year history of the NWA Women's World title. In other successful title defenses, Kerry Morton pinned Alex Taylor to retain the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship, Sion beat Homicide to retain the NWA National Championship, and La Rebellion defeated Blunt Force Trauma by disqualification to retain the NWA World Tag Team Championship and extend their reign to 169 days. Kevin Kiley Jr., formerly known in WWE and NXT as Alex Riley, had his first televised match since leaving WWE nearly seven years ago, losing to EC3 via submission. Kiley got his start in Florida Championship Wrestling, precursor to NXT, 
in 2007 and made his NXT debut in 2010, appearing there and on the main WWE roster for the next six years before being released in 2016. In other results from Nuff Said, Chris Adonis put out Trevor Murdoch with a master lock, Tom Latimer beat Fodder in a Singapore cane match, and Thrill Billy Silas defeated a bloody Kratos by referee stoppage, after Kratos appeared to legitimately split his head open on the ring post. For the Wrestling News, I'm Lou Kippelman. In independent wrestling news, Jordan Oliver survived the field on Saturday to take home the resurrected Jersey J Cup tournament presented by Jersey Championship Wrestling. Oliver defeated Speedball Mike Bailey in the finals to win the tournament and as a result also became the first JCW champion since the promotion was revitalized in 2019. Oliver defeated Alex Shelley in the first round of the tournament and Charles Mason in the semifinals. Bailey's path to the finals went through Jonathan Gresham and Commander. Held at the White Eagle Hall in Jersey City, New Jersey and streamed on Fight Plus, this was the 14th tournament of its kind and came back after over a decade of dormancy. The tournament was held from 2000 to 2011 as well as 2014. Past winners include Loki, Jay Lethal, Super Dragon, and Rhett Titus. Other wrestlers appearing in Saturday's tournament included Leo Rush, Joey Janela, Blake Christian, Aries, and Cole Radrick. At the top of the broadcast, I mentioned GHC champion Kato Kiyomiya being laid out by New Japan's Kazuchika Okada today after defeating Jack Morris at Osaka's Edion Arena. It was Kiyomiya's fourth defense of his second title reign. There were two other title matches on the show as well. Masa Kinemiya and Daiki Inaba knocked off Takashi Sugiyara and Satoshi Kojima to win the GHC tag team titles. Sugiyara and Kojima fall in their fourth defense after 140 days as champions. Yoshinori Ogawa and Aita made the first defense of their GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship, defeating Junta Miyawaki and Alejandro. In the only other singles match on the show, Drillistico topped Atsushi Katoge. Turning to Puerto Rico, the World Wrestling Council announced on its Super Estrellas de Lucha Libre program Saturday that tickets for its 50th anniversary event will be going on sale Monday morning at 12.01 a.m. through the ticket agency Ticketera. The show is set to take place at Coliseo Ruben Rodriguez in Bayamón on Saturday, June 24th. WWC was founded as the Capital Sports Promotion in 1973 by Carlos Colon, Victor Jovica, and Gorilla Monsoon and was a member of the National Wrestling Alliance until 1987. The July 1988 murder of bruiser Brody Frank Goodish at the hands of Invader 1 Jose Gonzalez caused many wrestlers to boycott the island, which in turn began a precipitous decline for the company over the last three decades. In November of 2018, the company sold its video library to World Wrestling Entertainment, and the Cologne family has since left the promotion. WWC's television airs twice a weekend on WAPA TV in Puerto Rico, WAPA America in the United States, and streams on YouTube. And we close with a look at televised ticket sales for the week. Monday Night Raw topped the week in sales for major TV tapings, according to a report from WrestleTix. Raw drew 9,926 fans to the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida. WWE's previous appearance at the Amway Center for a SmackDown taping last July drew 7,570 people. WWE SmackDown drew 6,449 fans for the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncansville, Connecticut last Friday, and the AEW Dynamite and Rampage taping drew 4,217 fans to the El Paso County Coliseum. Although it trailed Raw and SmackDown, the AEW taping drew the largest wrestling crowd at the El Paso County Coliseum in 13 years. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. 
The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.